Hey, you guys, Erin here. I am back with another moon update for you. Today, I'm going to be talking about the full moon we have coming up here on Friday, February 24th. This full moon peaks at 4.30 a.m. Pacific time and takes place in the sign of Virgo, five degrees Virgo. Okay, so hopefully you guys are familiar with the routine at this point. This is the peak of a growth cycle, a growth cycle that began approximately six months ago when we had a new moon in the sign of Virgo. Over these six months, we've all been experiencing this opportunity for growth that is related to this sign of Virgo. Now, this is a time to honor that growth. This is also a time, as soon as that moon begins to wane, meaning if she's in her fullest form at 4.30 a.m. Pacific time, by 4.31, the moon's starting to get smaller, that's, we set the intention to, that's when we want to let go of any of this Virgo and energy that just may not be serving us, okay? For some of you, you probably know this by now, I've been pulling on my journal every single full moon for so many years now, and I write down the growth that I'm grateful for, that's related to that zodiac sign. And I also write down what I want to let go of. Then I like to take a few gemstones that resonate well with that zodiac sign or just the overall astrological forces we're receiving. And I put them on top of my journal. I put that journal in some sort of a special place, something that feels special to me. I generally would be putting it on a, on a windowsill, but lately, since I've moved into this new place and I've got a fireplace that has a mantle, I've been putting it on top of that mantle. So whatever feels magical to you, I think a windowsill is actually a really good idea if you've got a, a good one for that. Okay, now also something else to mention here is that, of course, we all experience this full moon at five degrees Virgo as a collective, okay? But it's also incredibly unique to each and every one of us, okay? Do you have anything in your natal chart that's near five degrees Virgo? If so, this is a very powerful full moon for you. Or maybe you've got something opposing that at five degrees Pisces, or maybe something trining that near five degrees Capricorn or Taurus, or maybe squaring that at five degrees uh, Sagittarius or Gemini. There's and That might sound overwhelming to some people, and that's perfectly okay. But a really good trick to get familiar with your natal chart is if you can look to see which house in your natal chart the sign of Virgo comes through. Okay, when I'm talking about the houses, I'm talking about the area of your life where this is manifesting through. Has to be manifesting through somewhere. We all have the sign of Virgo somewhere in our natal chart. It could be coming through our house of relationships, our house of money, our house of career, our house of karma, our house of, of health, our house of communication, our house of transformation. There's all these different areas of our life that this could be manifesting through. Okay, and when I do write in my journal, of course, I apply it to that specific area of my life. Okay, if you're using a, a house system such as Placidus, then you're going to need to see exactly where five degrees Virgo comes through. Personally, when it comes to these lunar transits, I like working with the whole sign house system. I and have nothing against other house systems. I actually use them for other forms of astrology. But after doing this for so many years now, I mean, I've literally been doing this every single, watching the moon cycles through my natal chart since 2016 and watching how they manifest and the whole sign house system just shows itself most accurately to me but again nothing against other house systems if you're more familiar with placidus which a lot of people are then you know stick with what you know but i do encourage you to get comfortable with other house systems as well all right so there's that again i understand that might be a way too overwhelming for some people if you don't know what i'm talking about that's perfectly okay just seriously take a step back and focus on this sign of virgo in and of itself but if you do want to know what I'm talking about, first of all, when you get an astrology reading with me, as long as you schedule at least a one hour session, we might be able to do it in a half an hour, but we wouldn't be able to talk about anything else. I take the time to go through every single house in your natal chart to show you what zodiac sign is manifesting through there. So you can... I. As I always offer you a free version, a free video recording of the entire session. So you can go back and review it at any point. But with that said, you can always go back to review it to see which area of your life is being activated by anything astrological. You know, if I'm talking about the sign of Aries or Aquarius or Taurus or whatever it is, you can go back and review it and go, oh my gosh, this is activating the house of relationships. Well, geez, that makes sense. Or geez, this is, you know, I'm a Virgo rising. This is coming through my first house. This, I could, this is a very uh, important full moon for me. Okay. That sort of thing. All right. So there's that, but also you can calculate your natal chart for free online through so many different websites at this point. I think probably the most commonly used is astro.com. And at that point, you don't even need to know how to read a natal chart. It'll tell you at the bottom in written words where the sign of which house in your natal chart the sign of Virgo comes through. 
Okay, so there's that. All right, what I'm going to do in this recording is I'm going to break down this sign of Virgo for you so you really know what you're working with here. I'm also going to be pulling up the chart and showing you some other prominent astrological forces we are receiving at the time of this full moon. And I will also be talking about certain parts of the body that are ruled by the sign of Virgo because these parts of our body become more sensitive really anytime this moon transits to the sign of Virgo. And to be clear, the moon transits through every single zodiac sign every single month. She goes around the entire circle every single month. And anytime she goes to the sign of Virgo, these parts of our body become more sensitive, but it's definitely most prominent when it's a new or a full moon in the sign of Virgo. So I will be mentioning those body parts and some potential herbal remedies to help support these parts of our body during this kind of lunar transit. And of course, I will be bringing up some gemstones that resonate well with the sign of Virgo. And if you don't make it that far into the recording, you can always look in the description below and find a very full extensive list of gemstones that resonate well with the sign the moon is transiting through. Now, on that note, please do not feel discouraged if you do not have any of those gemstones. If you don't have any gemstones, that's perfectly OK. It's always a good idea if you want gemstones to write down, I am manifesting new gemstones. In a, that would be work, working with a, a new moon. Okay, so there's that. Now, this sign of Virgo. Virgo is what we call the mutable earth sign. Okay, now all the earth signs, Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo, are pretty strongly associated with our earthly responsibilities, okay, with things like work or finances, that sort of thing. The sign of Virgo is very much associated with being of service, okay? it's Usually it's a pretty grounded energy, but because it's mutable, it's adaptable. It's much more adaptable than the other earth signs, okay? It's a little bit, it's a little less grounded, in my opinion, than, than Taurus and Capricorn because it is adaptable, okay? It likes to go through changes, that sort of thing. Not to say that every single Virgo likes to go through changes, but usually it's almost like it just happens in your life. You're just constantly like, oh, I'm going this way now. Oh, I'm going this way now. Oh, I'm going this way there. Okay, so there's that. Now, also, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. A lot of you know how much I love to talk about Mercury. I'm going to try not to get too carried away here. But Mercury is just such a fascinating character to understand. In Greek mythology, Hermes is Mercury. Okay, Hermes Trismegistus. That is the messenger of the gods. Now, in Norse mythology, Mercury is uh, Odin. And in Egyptian mythology, Mercury is Thoth. In fact, Mercury is even associated with Moses. Okay, all these are like the messengers of the gods. And with that said, that's Mercury's job. All right, when we are, whatever we're doing, if you, I don't care if you're staring at a white wall, you're still receiving information. Okay, if you are driving a car, you're receiving information. If you're reading a book, whatever it is, you're constantly receiving information. And that's basically Mercury's job to bring that information into your consciousness. And he's got to keep it organized, got to keep it. It's like basically you receive that information. Mercury puts a little file, looks a label on that file and files it away somewhere into our consciousness so that when we want to reiterate that information, when we want to tell somebody else about that white wall we're staring out, Mercury can go in and find that file and bring it back out for us to be the messenger of, be the communicator of. That's Mercury's the messenger of the gods. And in fact, a lot of people who've got a super debilitated Mercury in their natal chart, these people have a difficult time keeping their thoughts organized. Sometimes it's like constant overstimulation. And then for other people, it could be like super foggy. The Mercury's in Pisces or something like that. It could be kind of a, a foggy sort of conscious awareness. Okay, so, or even tough time communicating. But with all that said, so the sign of Virgo is very much about keeping things organized, okay? And that, again, doesn't mean anything that I say about the sign of Virgo does not mean that just because somebody's a Virgo, they're going to have these qualities because there's so, so, so much more to the natal chart in and of itself. But a lot of them are going to have at least one or two of these qualities, okay? But it's very much about, like, Mercury's got to stay organized in our mind, okay? So Virgo's got to the, the keep things organized in their little suitcase or whatever. I always tell this story about this lady what, many years ago, before I was an astrologer, I was studying astrology, but I was a, a farmer. I was working on a farm full time. And this one lady who came to work on the farm, she was so adorable. She would show up with like this 
suitcase thing. It was like a farming suitcase. And she had all of her own little farming tools, all super clean and wiped down. She had an apron that she would show up with this, when in her, her organized suitcase. And at the end of the day, after we were all done with our work, she would wipe everything down, fold up her apron and put it all nicely back in her suitcase and put it in her car. And everything was super organized. And it's, she was a Virgo, Virgo rising. And she, I can't remember what else. It was like six other planets in the sign of Virgo, extremely Virgo and energy. Okay, so it's very much about keeping things organized. Now, also, there's a whole heck of a lot more to this sign of Virgo. It is represented by the Virgin. Okay, now the Virgin, this is not necessarily about being a virgin. This is more about the purity, okay, the cleanliness, purification, keeping things clean. This is actually like the sign of hygiene. Okay, now again, that doesn't mean that everybody who's a Virgo is A, you gotta be a virgin, but B is gonna want things super pure and clean. But again, a lot of them do. Like when somebody has their Venus in Virgo, okay, they tend to be, because Venus has a lot to do with what we're attracted to to and our romance and that sort of thing. They tend to be very, they want clean people. They don't want to be just messing around with people who've been spreading their energy all over the place. They, it's more about keeping things clean. Uh, a lot of times people have their son in Virgo. If they don't, they're, they're very particular about the food that they put in their body, that sort of thing. Not only that, but it's also the motto for the sign of Virgo is I analyze. Okay. Now, there's a whole oh gosh, there, let's see, where should I go with this? All right, first of all, let's start here. Being very particular. The sign of Virgo is actually, it, when the sun moves into the sign of Virgo, that's generally harvest season, okay? The sign of Virgo is very much associated with harvesting, harvesting the fruits of the material world, okay? Now with that, it's like, as somebody who's grown a lot of my own food throughout my life, it, every time I go out to, you know, pick up, squash or whatever it is, pick a tomato. I'm just looking at it. I'm a, and I don't have any Virgo in my natal chart, but I will sit there and analyze it like, oh boy, I really want this to be perfect. I don't want to pick it too early or, you know, but I also don't want it to sit too long and have it, you know, spoil on the, on the plant, that sort of thing. Analyzing things, but also on that note, having to do with this harvesting, this is the sign of being of service. Okay. Now this, in fact, in ancient real traditional astrology, this is like the sign of the servants. Okay. Like people had servants and that was the sign of Virgo, that people who were doing the services for others. Now uh, you might find a lot of Virgos or like North node in Virgo. It just depends on the chart, but a lot of people have a heavy dose of Virgo energy in their natal chart. They will work service positions, whether it be a mechanic or a bartender or whatever it is, waiting tables, that sort of thing, and be really good at it. Be really good at, and they, a lot of them will enjoy it. That, that this, they love to do that sort of thing. And it doesn't even have to be something that you're being financially compensated for. A lot of people who have, and we can also talk about the sixth house. A lot of people who have either a lot of Virgo energy in their natal chart, or they've got a very busy sixth house. The sixth house also has a lot to kind of to do with this sort of Virgo and energy being of service, that sort of thing. There are people who are constantly like helping out the neighbors or, you know, somebody who stays home to not just take care of their own children, but take care of the, their friend's children as well. Like just being of service in some sort of way. Okay. So there's that. Let's see. We covered this, uh, the mutable earth sign. It's ruled by Mercury. The motto is I analyze represented by the Virgin has a lot to do with hygiene. Okay, so how do you want to grow in these ways? Sorry, not how do you want to grow. How have you grown in these ways? Hopefully six months ago, you were thinking about how do I want to grow in these ways? Now you get to sit there and think to yourself, how have I grown in these ways? Maybe in some way, shape or form, you've decided to keep things a little more organized, your house or your car or your desk or whatever. Or maybe you've decided to keep yourself a little bit more pure. Maybe you've been working on having a healthy gut. In fact, I'll just say this right now. We'll go deeper into this later on in the recording, but the sign of Virgo actually does rule the intestines. And it's like a lot of Virgos will be very finicky about what they, you know, they know they've got sensitive intestines. Okay. So maybe you've been a little bit more mindful of that. Obviously the intestines are a very, very important part of our body. If you don't have healthy intestines, you're not going to be able to function optimally up in the mind as well. Okay, so again, how have you grown in these ways? But also, if you, a lot of people will 
pick up too much of this Virgo in energy. And sometimes there could be a tendency to pay such close attention to all the little details of something that you forget to take a step back and look at the big picture. That's a definitely a common theme with this sign of Virgo. So sometimes, you know, if that's the case, you might want to let go of some of this Virgo and energy, or potentially maybe you've taken on too many service things. You're helping out too many people and forget to take time to, you know, take care of yourself, that sort of thing. If that's the case, I would write that down and let go of some of that energy. But overall, this is a really nice time to be thinking about who have I been of service to? Or have I been keeping myself a little cleaner? Have I been analytical? That sort of thing. I've been keeping things organized. Okay, so there's that. Hopefully you guys get the gist of this sign of Virgo. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull up the chart. All right, so for those of you who are new to my recordings, what I work with is a geocentric Western astrology. And with that said, what we're looking at here is basically a snapshot of the tropical zodiac at the time of this full moon. So with that said, again, this takes place on February 24th at 4.30 a.m. Pacific time. And with geocentric, we put Earth right here in the middle of this thing. These right here, where I'm moving my mouse, those are the symbols for the celestial bodies, okay? Like here's the moon up here, over here's Mars, here's Pluto. When we go in the wheel just a little ways, these are the symbols for the zodiac signs that all these things will be beaming through at the time of this full moon. Okay, now, another thing too is if you're curious, I the software that I'm using here is a software called Time Passages. And I know a lot of people, I've been getting questions about like, what software are you using? It's really neat. Um, it's not the most affordable software uh, for the computer, but you can get a very, in fact, you can get a free version of it on your phone or any kind of tablet or whatever. In fact, I think that you can even use their website for free, but uh, it's, it's fantastic. I really do. I've been using this software really since day one, and I've definitely fiddled, I've been seven different kinds of astrology software on my computer, and this is hands down my favorite. Okay, so let's start up here. Here's the moon. The glyph for the moon is always easy to find because it looks just like a moon. It looks like a crescent moon. Okay, so here's the moon at five degrees. You can see that number right there, five degrees, Virgo. There's the symbol for the sign of Virgo. This little number here, those are the minutes. We don't need to focus on the minutes today. Okay, so first of all, at five degrees of Virgo, this is in the first decan of that Virgoan energy. So this is pink. Pure Virgoan energy. It's not necessarily a, it's blending in with the zodiac signs a little bit, but not so much. It's it's pretty pure Virgoan energy. Now, one of the first things you might notice is these dark red lines going right across the chart here. Well, you're going to see that in any chart for a full moon because every time we have a full moon, it means the sun and the moon are exactly opposite each other. It's called an opposition in astrology. Here is the sun right there. You're always going to see the sun with a circle with a dot in it. Okay. And this is the symbol for the sign of Pisces. So happy solar return season to all you Pisces out there. This is an interesting Pisces season. And I'm going to break a little bit of that down in this recording, but just know that in a couple of weeks from now, I will be putting out a new moon in Pisces video. Uh, and we'll go a lot more, we'll put a lot more depth into that sign of Pisces. But Let's start by talking about the fact that we've all been receiving kind of a, a more uh, prominent amount of Piscean energy than usual. And, and this has been, I can't remember what year Neptune went into Pisces, forgive me, but it's been several years. Now. It's been like eight years, 10 years, something like that. Sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But here is Neptune. Here's that symbol for the sign of Pisces. Okay, Neptune rules Pisces. Neptune is kind of what makes Pisces what it is. And Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter, but let's just focus on Neptune since Neptune's been going through Pisces and will be there for another couple of years. Okay, Pisces is the mystic. Pisces is the sign of spirituality. It's a very flowy energy. It's it's the mutable water sign, meaning it's very emotional and it has constant like shifting currents of emotions. It's deeply psychic. It's this sign of, of kind of being attached to, not necessarily attached, but in touch with other worlds, okay? It's this sign of th that Neptunian influence. What Neptune does is he breaks down psychic barriers. Like we all kind of have these unseen uh, barriers around us so that we're not entirely picking up all of each other's energies. Well, sign of Pisces doesn't really have boundaries, okay? And that's because that Neptunian influence puts holes it's like psychic porousness okay meaning 
looks makes the the, the boundaries have it, it makes them more porous so we're much more sensitive to other people's energy okay but again it's most of all it's it recognized for its its intense connection to spirit and with neptune going through pisces for all these years now and another couple of years we've all been experiencing that i mean how many people have we seen just having these spiritual awakenings, people that you would never even guess that would happen to. I mean, it's, it's happened to me so many times over these past few years where I'm seeing somebody that I knew years ago, you know, say I run into them in a store or whatever. And I'm like, whoa, what happened? Like you used to always wear a suit and tie. All of a sudden you're dressing like a heavy. <laughs> and it's like, oh, they're like, I found, you know, my spiritual practices, that sort of thing. And that's very, very Pisces energy. Well, what's going on this is such an interesting lineup here here's the sun going through pisces so of course we're all receiving a piscean energy but the game changer here is that right next to the sun is saturn it's about four degree orb but regardless so saturn has been going through pisces since march of 2023 and will be there till the end of february of 2026 but saturn is like this really old stingy grumpy man okay saturn is the bringer of discipline and responsibilities like when i it, the, all the archetypes for saturn it is saturn is actually chronos in greek mythology this is old like old that just think about like my old high school principal that sort of thing that was really oh you're in trouble now sort of thing you didn't do your homework that's very saturnian energy and going through the Pisces, Pisces is like, but I just want to be a free spirit. And by the way, it's, this is not a transit that happens very often. Saturn takes about, oh, I don't know, 28 to 30 years to go around the, the whole zodiac. So this is, and it's just not something we experience all the time. So I do feel like Saturn going through Pisces is definitely kind of um, really getting some people serious about their their spiritual practices but it also definitely saturn going through pisces can bring the 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 sorrows of of the world into our conscious awareness it actually can be kind of a a sad sort of feeling with sad if that's hitting something in your chart if you've got anything in your chart near nine degrees pisces you might be experiencing that it's either going to manifest as Oh my gosh, I, I this is I have to all of a sudden do this, or otherwise, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Like I, this is something I've been procrastinating doing for years, and all of a sudden Saturn comes up and attacks that thing, and it's like I have to do this now because he's all about discipline. Or it could also be this like, oh my gosh, I'm just I'm terribly sad all of a sudden, whether it be for no reason at all or it be for a very specific reason. Okay, now. Here we have Mercury also going through Pisces. Now, Mercury is the key player in this entire full moon transit because Mercury rules Virgo and the full moon's in the sign of Virgo. Okay, he's kind of like the lord of this full moon. And so he's prominent and he's right next to the sun. Okay, now again, what is Mercury dual? Rules our mental function and, and our our conscious awareness and to a certain degree and our nervous system and, and our communication skills. Well, the combination of these things with Saturn, Mr. Discipline and Restrictive, fairly close to Mercury and the sun in the middle can be actually an incredible transit, especially if this is hitting something in your chart. Okay, it depends on what it is, but especially like, let's say you've got your sun uh, between one and, I don't know, 12 degrees Pisces, but it could also be your own natal Mercury. Uh, it, it could it could even be your Venus. It just depends on on how it's hitting and what it is in your chart. But it, I mean, really, for all of us, technically, it could be a really good transit for serious concentration, because the combination of Mercury, Sun, and Saturn that wouldn't even necessarily entirely. I mean, of course, it does matter what zodiac sign it's in. In the sign of Pisces, you wouldn't think it's a concentration because Pisces is like out to lunch a lot of times. Pisces lives in dreamland. But this uh, kind of brings it into focus. And in fact, this is a lot of people who are born with Mercury and Pisces, to be totally honest here, Mercury it struggles in the sign of Pisces. It's a, a de debilitated placement. I'll just leave it at that. Because Mercury wants to be focused and concentrated. But at the Pisces is like, Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. People, some people could be kind of foggy up in their mind. A lot of them will have Mercury and Pisces, but it also those a lot of those people could be incredibly psychic, can be 
Um, so somebody who, uh, you know, can understand what animals are thinking, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't even want to give too many examples here, but I, I, I don't want to get too, too carried away. But overall, especially if you are studying something that is of a spiritual nature or anything that has to do with water, Pisces, again, is a water sign, or anything that has to do with emotions or dreams, the sign of Pisces is very strongly associated with dreams. This could increase a lot of people's dreams. Holy smokes, Mercury, Sun, Saturn, and Neptune all going through Pisces. Some of you might be having some very, very interesting dreams. You might even be able to remember them. You might even be able to like concentrate in your dream because of this kind of transit. And it's it, it's these things all blended together, but these red lines that are going across here, these oppositions, just picture the moon in her fullest form, beaming on all these things, shining her light on all of these things, making them all kind of just stand out even that much more. So that is definitely a very interesting aspect of this full moon. Okay, let's talk about what's still going on in the sign of Aquarius. Okay, so I'm kind of giggling. I might tell a little bit of an interesting story here. Let's start with Venus and Mars being together here. So you might have heard me say this before. I personally like when Venus and Mars are together, especially in somebody's natal chart. It's a lot of these people will be able to kind of embrace the masculine and the feminine within themselves uh, very fairly, okay? Because Mars is the masculine energy. Mars is like the aggressor, okay? Mars is dominant, sometimes referred to as the planet of war versus Venus is the planet of love, okay? Venus is about harmony and beauty and relationships and poetry and all things that are beautiful, okay? Especially romantic relationships. Mars is more like sexual, okay? And Venus is more like, let's just snuggle sort of thing, okay? So Mars always wants to be aggressive, but he can't, it's like his, his like beautiful lady is right next to him and he can't be as aggressive. In fact, I have heard that there was a study that was done that men's testosterone does go up when they're around other attractive women. women. But regardless, Mars can't, it's Venus is toning him down. They're blended together right now. She's toning him down. But this is all going through this sign of Aquarius, which this is a hyper intellectual energy. The motto for Aquarius is I know it's a very progressive energy. It's a very revolutionary energy. And we've also got Pluto here now at one degree is Aquarius. Now, Pluto is a bringer of powerful transformation. And I just was I received an email. It might have even been from this. The time passages uh, software. I can't remember where it was from, but I didn't even open the email. I just saw the subject. So it was talking about this Venus, Mars, Pluto connection and the subject was the metamorphosis of love and i loved that because it's like here we have you know venus and mars and then the bringer of powerful transformation Mar uh, pluto does have a lot to do with that metamorphosis okay so depending how this is hitting your chart that's a very very interesting transit and i'm just going to bring this up right now if you saw my last recording uh, what was it? The the new moon in the sign of Aquarius. <clears throat> it put a lot of information about the the connection between Pluto and Mars. I don't remember if I actually used the word toxic. I think I was trying to avoid that and just use the word powerful. But that is kind of a a, a toxic connection. Pluto is the ruler of the underworld. Pluto is Hades, okay, and Mars is that aggressor. And together, like in medical astrology, that's actually kind of a dangerous transit. If say Pluto comes up and hits your own natal Mars, that's a pretty dangerous transit. Or oh, even the other way around, Mars comes up and hits your Pluto. That's still pretty dangerous. Not It doesn't mean something definitely bad is going to happen, but it's just, it can be something like a, a very bad spider bite. Something like that can, can come from the combination of those guys. Well, when Mars went exactly conjunct with Pluto, Guess who got food poisoning? Uh, yeah, I got violently ill. And it, it just made sense. The way it hit my chart, I went back and looked at it later when I was feeling well enough. It was, it was really, really brutal. I have not been that sick in a very, very long time. In fact, I'm still kind of recovering from it. And that was quite a few days ago now. I think it was like five days ago. Uh, but that... that transit is so powerful. But hallelujah, Venus is there. She's kind of now... Mars is a little further away from Pluto and Venus and, and Mars are a little more 
snuggled up. But it's so interesting that it's all in this like super highly intellectual energy of Aquarius, revolutionary energy going on. Okay, now let's see, where should we go next? Let's talk about these guys right here. So this right here is the North Node and this right here is Chiron. So the North Node, which that's the pump that brings energy in. It's kind of the celestial energy in. It's like the, the gate for celestial energy into Earth. And it's like exactly conjunct Chiron, not entirely exact, but they're both at 16 degrees uh, Aries. Now, I've talked about this a lot that Chiron, because Chiron, he's been in Aries for a while. He's still going to be there for another couple of years. Chiron is the wounded healer. Aries is that aggressive cardinal fire sign, the sign of self. As they talked about Mars being the aggressor, Mars is what rules Aries. Okay. And with that said, it's like we could be aggressively kind of trying to heal ourselves. I don't, I shouldn't say aggressively, but hopefully you don't, I don't necessarily mean aggressively, but going after it. Like I, this is, I, I've been trying to heal this, whatever it is, my injured knee or uh, uh, my toothache, whatever it is, but really, or even if it's not even phys physical ailment, it's more like trauma. This is definitely a good transit for healing trauma. Chiron can have a lot to do with trauma, but it's really, really strong because it, they're blending together. The gates of celestial energy, Chiron's right next to it. It's like whoosh, coming in, coming in hot. Okay, now not only that, but of course, opposite that is the south node up here in the sign of Libra. So that's the drain point that can take the stuff away, the stuff, the trauma you're trying to heal. It, it can flush it out through the south node, okay? Now, also, I will say this. If you've got anything near 16 degrees Libra, that drain point is sitting on top of that thing in your natal chart. So it's, let's come up with an example. Okay, well, let's say it's your Mercury. Let's say you've got your Mercury near 16 degrees Libra. Mercury rules, again, mental function, communication. Well, all of a sudden, those things aren't working so well. Like, all of a sudden, your mental function is not so optimal, uh, because the dream point's going over it. Okay, whatever that thing is, if you're Venus, if it's your Venus, you might not be feeling so beautiful, or maybe it's time to let go of a certain relationship or something like that. As a collective, I'm not super stoked about this transit because Libra is really like the sign of justice and fairness and balance and harmony. And we got the dream point going through there all the way until January of next year. Okay, now next up, let's go to Jupiter here. So Jupiter, the great benefic Jupiter, the bringer of abundance and wisdom and luck and philosophy. He's going to the sign of Taurus until May of this year. Now, Taurus is that sign that has a lot to do with food, has a lot to do with finances. Okay, if this is hitting some in your chart, this could potentially be good for finances, but it also could be, Jupiter actually does rule fat and also rules the arteries. Okay, so this is a... a transit if this is hitting some of your chart you might just want especially with a full moon in virgo you might just want to be a little bit mindful about the kinds of things that you're putting in your body and might you know because this is something that can bring in and like if you're somebody who already loves you know say greasy fatty foods that sort of thing and this is hitting some of your chart you might all of a sudden love those things even more <clears throat> or it could even be one of those things where it's like it, it could potentially could even affect hormones, that sort of thing, especially if it's in your Venus. Oof. Okay, so so there's that. But overall, <clears throat> this could be kind of an exciting transit for some of you out there. If you've got a lot of strong Taurus energy going on, but moving over here, we got Uranus going through Taurus for another couple of years, and Uranus. This is going to get really, really interesting. These guys are going to be exactly conjunct. I think in either April or May. Of this year, they're going to be really, really close. Even towards the end of March, they're going to be really, really close all throughout April. Now, Uranus brings the abrupt revolutionary changes. Uranus is very, very unpredictable. Uranus is this energy that's like electrical. Uranus rules over things like technology and electricity and things like, you know, um, Wi-Fi and, and anything that has to do with that sort of thing. That's the Uranus influence. And if you think about how quickly technology is constantly changing, that's Uranus. That's, he's like, this is out with the old, in with the new, out with the old, in with the new. That sort of thing. Very spasmatic. And going through this sign that rules over food and finances. It's, I mean, if you think about what's going on with our food systems, even, you know, Taurus can be very much associated with things like agriculture, but also just any kind of food. And I really have not spent much time on on uh, Instagram 
lately I've been dealing with a lot of power outages and, and internet interruptions and that sort of thing because I live so deep in the mountains. We've been having a lot of storms come through here. But I remember fairly recently seeing some sort of post show that was like, <clears throat> what they, they're creating meat. Like, oh, it just, uh, to me, I'm sorry if that is offensive to anybody, but to me, it was just disgusting. It was like they're growing me and I think it even came out of like human cells and that's you know some people might call that a revolutionary change with the food uh and that's why I say like some of this is good and some of it is not so good uh again I'm sorry if that offends you because I do have family members that would definitely be like oh that's great because then we don't have to kill the animals and that sort of thing I'm not trying to say we shouldn't kill animals but at the same time I just don't want to eat lab-grown meat ever <laughs> and it's if you don't know I am I am a vegetarian I've been a vegetarian for pretty much most of my life um but I'm not also let me just put this out there I'm not one of those people who's gonna harp on somebody because they're not a vegetarian people who are very very close to me are not vegetarian and as long as you're just being mindful about it and and eating healthy food, whether it includes me or not, that's what's most important to me. But I'm also not going to dislike somebody just because they don't eat healthy food. I've got plenty of friends and family that don't eat healthy food and that's, I still love them just the same. Okay. So there's that. Let's see. Is there anything else we should cover here? I think we covered the gist of it most importantly. And I do want to say this as well. If there's anything that anybody wants me to put a little more emphasis on. I try to, you know, make this content for people who are brand new to it. But I also know that some of you out there have been, you know, following me and other astrologers for a while and you're trying really hard to learn how to do this stuff. So I really do try to like drop little pieces of extra information for you guys. And if there's, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I always, I might miss a comment every once in a while, but here on YouTube, I really do pay very close attention to the comments and I, I love some of your comments just totally like brighten my whole day. Um, but if there's something else that you want me to go deeper into, please leave a comment and let me know. I will see that comment. Okay, so there's that. Let's talk about body parts. So the sign of Virgo, already mentioned this, I believe, rules the intestines, okay? Now, other parts as well, we'll get to that, but the, the intestines, again, are very, very important part of our body, okay? This is in part why I'm very much, uh, 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 I try to eat as healthy as possible because many years ago, and this is no exaggeration here, I almost died. Um, and a lot of that started with a problem with my intestines, okay? And if I'm being totally honest, doctors, did not help me at all. And I saw several doctors, nothing. I know there's some really wonderful doctors out there, but everyone that I went to just honestly made things worse. And that's when I started really deeply studying this stuff so that I could heal myself. Uh, but yeah, it, that all started with my intestines. Okay. So I wish I could show you guys this stuff, but when I was just got that food poisoning situation, as soon as I was able to actually keep water down, I literally couldn't, I, I would just drink a little bit of water and it was, it would just come right back up. It was horrible. But once I could actually get a little bit, I started drinking a little bit of ginger tea, da, da, da. I, I'm thinking to myself, like, this is parasitic. Like this is something, this is like a parasite. And so I actually finished the rest of my bottle of this stuff. But some of you may have heard me talk about this stuff before. It's called RUG, R-U-G, stands for Remove Unwanted Guests. That is the most powerful intestinal cleanser and support that I have ever experienced. I will say yellow dock is also really good for the intestines. There's a million things that are good for the intestines, obviously probiotics, prebiotics, just overall eating healthy, but enzymes, enzymes are really good as well. But the rug um, will definitely help to get parasites out, but also it just has all sorts of support for, for the intestines. And I, well, like I said, I would, I, I tossed out the bottle because I just finished it. As soon as I could start to take that stuff again, I, I went through my, the rest of my bottle of rug to get rid of any, you know, parasitic activity that was going on in my intestines. Okay. So there's that you might, especially if you've got a lot of Virgo energy in your natal chart, you might want to be extra careful with what you are putting into your body. Okay. For those intestines. Another thing is that the sign of Virgo rules the liver. That, that rug, oh, by the way, you can get rug. I'll leave a link for it at shopdavidwolf.com. And it's um, shop David and wolf is W-O-L-F-E.com. I highly encourage you to try it out. Okay, now, uh, the liver 
I, I love milk thistle for the liver. I love milk thistle so much for the liver, but I will say this, this is something that I had to learn myself from, but I then learned, like I had to experience it for myself. But then of course, reading about it later being like, oh, well, that's what happened. If you're somebody who's not having regular bowel movements, okay, I'm going back to when I was really, really sick and just trying to clear myself out. If you are not having regular bowel movements and you take something like milk the thistle, which that flushes the stuff out the gunk out of your liver, which by the way, that stuff rub also has stuff that's good in it for the liver. Gosh, did I already say that? Boy. Okay. So anything you take that's going to uh, flush out your liver, if your colon is backed up, what's going to happen is it's going to dump that gunk into your colon and make the colon even worse, which is horrible as well. Okay. That can leak into your, your blood and all kinds of really nasty stuff. So unless you're somebody who's having at least, you know, fairly regular bowel movements, I don't necessarily entirely recommend uh, milk thistle. And I will say this, I am not a doctor. I am I'm not offering any kind of medical advice or even opinion. I am telling you what I have experienced for myself. Okay. And do with it what you will. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Now, and I got, again, putting the emphasis on that rug. That's why I brought that up because the, that has stuff to clean out the liver, but would also help to flush out the colon as well. Okay. So there's that. Now also this, because it's ruled by mercury, the sign of Virgo has a huge influence on the nervous system. Okay. The sympathetic nervous system to be specific, but this is okay. A lot of Virgos or even Virgo rising, especially what I've seen at the strongest is when somebody's a Virgo rising and, and they have Mercury in Virgo and they're like kind of closely conjunct. People will have a, a nervous disposition and, and they will tell me, yes, I deal with nerves a lot. And my favorite remedy for like the nervous, anxious feeling is hops. And I've mentioned this as well. I don't have any Virgo in my natal chart. I've never, uh, I've never had... Um, a, a problem with like nerves or anxiousness. I, of course, everybody in their entire life has experienced a nervous time. Uh, it's not like I've never been nervous before, but it, it's not a, a thing for me. But I will say this, when I have experienced it, when there's a lot of stuff going on and making a move and, and all sorts of things, dealing with a, a sick cat and all sorts of things, I did notice my nervous system felt very uncomfortable. And hops, I like it as a tincture personally. Um, it, you can do whatever you want with the, the hops, uh, but it is, it's a, it's powerful for the nervous system, but there's so many other things as well. I mean, it, milky oats or oat tops, or, I mean, there's just so many things that you can help with your nervous system. I also personally really, really like CBD. I mean, many of you know this at this point, but I, I have grown cannabis going back to when I worked on a farm, it was actually a cannabis farm. And uh, I've grown cannabis for a very, very long time. And I've thoroughly enjoyed indulging in cannabis, but not everybody does. And not like that, but it's not even necessarily easily accessed for everybody, uh, depending on where you live in the world. But if just the CBD, okay, just the cannabidiol, the CBD can be, you can buy it so as, as long as it's, um, what's it called, the uh, full spectrum CBD, of course, there's going to be brands and stuff that uh, just know that, that if it's really, really inexpensive, suspiciously inexpensive, it's probably not going to do any good. But the more, you know, as long as it's a higher quality CBD, that can be thin fantastic for nervous systems. My goodness. Okay. So there's that. I'm putting a lot of emphasis on that because I imagine there's probably a lot of Virgos watching this. All right. So let's go to gemstones. All right. So here's the deal. I, I Virgo's dedicated zodiacal birthstone is sapphire and I do not have a sapphire. I actually, I did. I had a, a an opaque, um, a, a very much affordable version of, of a sapphire, uh, but I can't find it anywhere. And, and this is where I'm going with this. I can't find a whole bunch. I must, when I moved a couple months ago, I must have a box somewhere that didn't get opened that it's got a bunch of my little crystals in it because I can't find my sapphire. There's another one that my, my green tourmaline, I can't find. That's another one that works well with the sign of Virgo. But I also want to talk about sapphire for a minute because there's mostly you're going to see blue sapphire, but also yellow sapphire. There's other kinds of sapphire as well. But for those of you that now these are expensive, you know, if we're going, I mean, you could definitely get affordable sapphire. Absolutely. Like I said, I had one. Um, but the the real, you know, high quality, super clear versions of sapphire are pretty pricey. Uh, but 
if you happen to have, I know, especially Virgos, you know, if, if as children, maybe you got a Virgo, you know, um, birthstone ring or whatever, that sort of thing. But the if it's blue sapphire, that's a, an energy that could be really, really good if you need to get disciplined or if you are experiencing inflammation. It, it, it's one that can kind of bring down, it's kind of this like colder or astringent energy. It's very Saturnian. In fact, a blue sapphire is Saturn stone. And it kind of can bring, if you're experiencing major inflammation somewhere in your body, sometimes it could be a really good idea to just sit down and envision the color blue to bring down that inflammation. And that's blue sapphire could do that. But for some people, this could also kind of create restrictions in their life. It really just depends a lot on your natal chart, okay, where what stones would be best for you. But this is also something you might be able to just tap into on your own. But I just want to get that message out there because, again, there's probably a lot of Virgos watching this, and you might have sapphire because you are a Virgo. But just be mindful with that blue sapphire. It's a very, very very powerful stone. Now, yellow sapphire is incredibly different. Okay. This yellow sapphire is actually Jupiter's stone. That's yellow sapphire brightens things up, brings abundance, brings the wisdom, brings philosophy. It's a very optimistic kind of stone. Yellow sapphire is. That is one I've said this before. I've, I, within the next five years, I want a really high quality yellow sapphire because that it, it, it is perfect for my natal chart. It, uh, okay, I'll just say this. It's Jupiter's stone. Jupiter is what we would might call the captain of my ship or my lord or my main ruler as a Sagittarius rising. And so yellow sapphire, it, they're just so stunning and so beautiful. But they're very, and I'll also say this, uh, and a more affordable, this is part of the reason I work with citrine a lot, a more affordable version of a yellow sapphire would be citrine. Okay, so enough of that sapphire talk. Obviously not everybody's got a sapphire laying around, but there's plenty of other gemstones that resonate well. I'm going to start with talking about Amazonite. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Okay, this is a beautiful stone. And really, the, all the stones I'm going to pull up here, you're going to see, are green. Okay, very, it's like going back to the sign of Virgo being ruled by Mercury. Mercury's stone is actually emerald, green emerald. That's another extremely powerful stone that can be really good for the nervous system talking about how hermes hermes trismegistus is mercury okay hermes hermes i guess i'll put it this way they're very very strongly associated okay but this uh hermes is the supposed author of the emerald tablets emerald that's mercury's stone this we're talking about it's like a upaye system okay now that's what I'm saying, all these green stones. Green stones just resonate well with the sign of Virgo. There's a whole heck of a lot more. Again, you can look in the list below, even garnet. Garnet resonates really, really well with the sign of Virgo. But Amazonite is really, really nice. This one can be good for the nervous system, can also be good for um, overall emotions, uh, healing trauma, all sorts of things. And by the way, where I get all my information, not all of it, a lot of my information from is from a book called the Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Hall. Fantastic book. It's got loads of information about so many different kinds of crystals. Okay, so Amazonite, beautiful. So I actually have, I should have put it on. I have a little tiny Amazonite pendant that I love so much. Okay, now this one right here is called Tree Agate. Okay, now really any kind of agate can also go really well with the same verb. Agate, agate is technically Gemini's stone all forms of agate but again gemini and mercury share the same sorry gemini and virgo share the same ruler they are both ruled by mercury so a lot of their their energies can be similar of course they're different zodiac signs one's an air sign one's an earth sign but regardless so these green stones really do resonate well another one would be moss agate is beautiful i have a piece of moss agate but it's it's well Okay, I'm just giving you guys too much information about my my life here. I I propagate plants, meaning you like snip off a, a, a stem and you put it in water and have it grow its own roots. And I do that a lot. And in the the water, I have a lot of little tiny teeny tiny gemstones. And that's where my moss agate is. I almost thought about pulling it uh, pulling it or tree. Yeah, no moss agate is. I almost thought about pulling it out to show you guys. But I mean, any of these things. This one right here. 
this one right here, any kind of green stone, or again, any kind of agate. If you're working with agate, uh, you know, the, if you're going to use something like red, that's going to be more stimulating. If it's like more like an earth tone, it's going to be more calming, that sort of thing. Okay, so there's that. Enough with the gemstones. My spirit's rolling away here. I'm going to stop that from rolling away. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Thank you for listening. Sorry for rambling. And if you'd like to schedule an astrology reading, please visit erinwageastrology.com. I do hope to hear from some of you. And until next time, namaste to all of you.